Aries. Aries, this is your forecast for August 2016 and this month we have both the Sun and Venus transiting through your sister sign of Leo. So this should be a fun month for you. Okay, the Sun is the essence of who you are. It's what you radiate and Venus rules the principle of love, romance, money and so forth. And as they're transiting here through the sign of Leo, that will be in your fifth house for self-expression, all the fun things that you like to do, the leisure hobbies and so forth. But the fifth house also represents romance. So when we have the sun and Venus here, well, how can it not be a good month for you? And I'm also feeling here as we start off that there might be something surprising right off the bat here on uh, August 1st when Venus and Uranus are going to meet up here in a beautiful beam uh, between the first house and the fifth. That's you and something new. Now, for those of you who are single, Aries, this could be a day where you could come to meet somebody you know that could be not just really attractive to you, but something, somebody who could be very electric to you. That's what Uranus does. And not only that, but if you're thinking about starting your own business or launching, August 1st could be really good for you because the fifth house also rules this area of creative projects, new businesses, any businesses that you may own. And so if you already have your own business, well, this should be a good month. At least it's starting off really, really nice. But this month too here at Aries, we're going to have a, a full lunar eclipse, not before August 18th, but we always want to put a little extra attention on what an eclipse does, especially the lunar eclipses, which could be a little bit more emotional as the moon rules our emotions, right? Think about the tides, high tides, low tides, we're 80% water. So in that sense, it's going to be 25 degrees in uh, uh, Aquarius. So any other planets you have at 25 degrees in your chart, this total lunar eclipse will be triggering off on them as well. But here in your solar chart, it's going to be in the 11th house. So the 11th house always has to do with our hopes and dreams. Um, it's also the area of friendships or groups and organizations and so forth. So you might just come to see that something is going to be culminating there on the 18th. Uh, and if anything becomes eliminated on this day, you always have to trust, or should I say we, Always have to trust that the universe knows best. Whatever will be eclipsed out of your life is for your higher good. So whenever we uh, leave a room, right, it opens up for new things to come into our life. And we got a solar eclipse, new beginnings, that's coming up here next month in September, so stay tuned for it. That might just come to shine some light on why this elimination now is taking place. So you don't have to wait long, in other words. Uh, but anyway, regardless, uh, Venus, Sun, and Leo, it brings out all that warmth, that Leo energy. Even though you're in Aries, you're going to be experiencing that Leo energy here in your own personal life here in August. Mars, right now, it is uh, finalizing its journey there in Scorpio. It, okay, so now we have energy moving forward again. Mars meaning it's always our onboard propellant mo uh, motor, right? It's been retrograded for a couple of months. So we can start seeing now that we're picking up speed. Uh, Mars is always our energy levels. It's also the goals and our ambitions and so forth. So if things have been moving slow for you <clears throat> here early summer, well, not for long. Right now, it's concluding uh, Scorpio. It will be two years before it comes back to Scorpio. And many of you have felt that it's been digging deeply into the intimate area of your chart, the eighth house, right? So that is emotional intimacy. It is uh, the area where you share resources with your significant other or with partners. It's the area uh, also of investments and bonuses, commissions, royalties. Uh, maybe you have been spending extra time here 
Aries, I'm getting all these things straightened up and getting all your ducks in a row and whoever has been working with you has been working deeply in order to get everything lined up. But be prepared because early on here in August, Mars is now going to be moving into the ninth house, which has to do with long distance travel. It also indicates people in faraway places. Maybe you're going to be interacting more so with foreign people or maybe you will be traveling or uh, setting yourself up to get a passport or a green card. This area rules all of that. And not to forget, maybe publishing. So if those of you out there have been working and uh, just uh, chipping along here on your manuscripts, this would be a time perhaps to get in touch with a publisher that not only will like but love what you have to offer. And that's also because Saturn has been here now for a while, Aries, and Saturn is helping you hone in on your skills, to master your skills of higher communication, of studying, uh, maybe taking on a degree. And if so, you will see that Mars now is going to come in and oomph it, give it more power to uh, take on these studies uh, or this research that not only will uh, give you a whole lot of great confidence right here and now, but you're building towards your career, which is going to come when Saturn moves into your 10th house. Not quite yet, but this is what you're building towards because your career is going to reach certain heights which it has not seen for 28 years. This will be more so uh, still uh, a year, year and a half to go. But everything, every single step of the path right now is super important. So then we have, uh, yes, uh, let's see, Mercury here now just changed sign into Virgo. Mercury is how we think. It's our communication. It's our linear thought processing. And now that it is in Virgo, which is the sign it rules, it's going to be super enhanced. Virgo is always known uh, for how strategized they are in their life. They, they not only think a lot, they can tend to overthink or maybe sometimes overworry, uh, but they're very analytical. So you're going to see how your own mind is going to turn on that knob. You're going to be that much more analytical yourself uh, this month. Now, it is in the sixth house for day-to-day -day routines and so forth, so you might have more communication, as Mercury rules communication, more communication on what is important for you so that you can organize your daily life, which Mercury is really good about. So, uh, and this area has been expanding for you ever since that of last, say late last summer, when Jupiter has been growing and trying to give you a totally different set of um, routines, right? So maybe more freedom has come in for you, which has been great, and I think you've been enjoying it uh, a whole lot more too. More time on your, your schedule for you. So let's take a look at now the top of the month. I mentioned earlier Venus and Uranus are going to do the dance there on the first. So this is great because why it might just open a door that you have no knowledge about prior to. Uranus always tends to bring us those unexpected surprises and we love when Uranus gives us those good surprises, right? This time around, the surprise will be from Venus, love, money, romance, the things that you desire and hold close to heart. But also on the first, we have Sun and Saturn. Now, the Sun is always the essence of who you are. Saturn has everything to do with grounding your life in a good way. And when we have a positive being between the two of them like we have here, well, that also means that whatever good news, surprise coming in here on the first will have longevity. It's really grounding something in the area between um, your higher concepts, the way you think, spiritually too, but also into the area of your creativity where the sun currently is. So say if you are a writer and author and Saturn's up in the ninth house, great time for you to connect with somebody who can promote you, somebody who has mastery of their skill. On the 6th is the next time on the calendar we want to circle. And why? Because there's a little bit of a challenge. We have uh, some planets here squaring off on each other. Squares are always a little stressful to get through. Now, one is with Mercury and Saturn. 
they, there might be a negotiation on this day. You might have to stand your ground for what is uh, important to you and what you believe. Uh, Venus and Mars are square, so I'm thinking this could be a, a professional talk, maybe time to look at any kind of agreements, negotiations, creative negotiations perhaps. Uh, in that case, you want to look at the money side, that's Venus, where Mars is kind of like over there, but you're wanting to hold it here, so you might really have to hold your confidence levels up if this is a negotiation in business, for example. On the 7th, I still see things not really coming together, maybe uh, either you or the other parties taking a little break to think things through before uh, anything is yayed or nayed. However though, pay attention to the 10th because Pluto's coming to the, the table. Pluto's all about transformation, but also rules money as well, big money. Mercury, the negotiation or contracts. Now on this day, I feel that if you're having more talks coming in, you could add more to it. This is a time where you're birthing yourself, okay? You're birthing your, um, not just your creativity, but the goals that you're, you're putting forward for the long term, right? So you don't want to take this too easy. Now, if it's a relationship we're talking about, you're still negotiating something that is long term, right? So you will really want to listen to your inner self, be true to your heart, to your higher self. And then I'm seeing it's going to be tested again there on the 13th. So this might be a whole week where there's a little touch and go, something's not fully finalized, but I see how you're bringing to the table your worth. And that is what it's all about. I'm feeling this is quite an important week for you because we're not just talking day-to-day, -day, every life uh, situations where things come and go and yak yak and whatnot. These are actually uh, situations that can really set you up for months and actually for the next coming years important week, so pay attention. The 14th, you're going to have a little bit of the same feel like you did there on the 7th, okay, where things are now open, it's a little lofty, but nothing is really written in stone, but you're excited, you're dreaming, you're expanding your horizons, you're in touch with those passions that you hold as a vision, Aries, and I'd like you to hold that. Remember, nothing can manifest that hasn't been envisioned first, right? So through this little mm, tunnel where you're being tested uh, this whole week, I feel the conclusions are going to come before the month is over because already on August 16th, I'm seeing that you could be uh, in a place where things now have come to a conclusion, all right? So you're looking at what you have dealt with, you're looking at maybe a contract or at least an agreement that you can live with. And it's going to surprise you. It's really going to surprise you because why? In those couple of days in between where you held a little bit doubts and fears, well, because you stood your ground, because you know your worth, um, I'm feeling there on the 16th and 17th, lo and behold, here's new chapters opening up in your own book of life. Now, this is the Sun and Uranus and a beautiful, perfect beam, also Venus and Pluto, Venus rules money, Pluto rules big money. Uh, so these two days, there, I, I sense there's a feeling of celebration. Now, whenever Pluto is mentioned, when I do your readings here, uh, it's your 10th house for career. So this is career. It is maybe the business that you own or if you're going to be partnering with somebody or if you are working for somebody else. Regardless, you are in a great place here on the 17th. So the uh, 18th, we have that lunar eclipse. So maybe now that things are showing up and, and leveling out for you, the uh, full moon lunar eclipse is going to culminate and uh, just eclipse something out of your life that no longer holds any value for you because why? You're starting fresh, you're starting new, and of course that solar eclipse next month will give you even more insight as to how that's going to go, but you are now all powered up because Mars, Aries, your ruler, now moving forward, it's been sleeping, like I said, for a couple of months, but now it's moving forward and it's connecting here on the 24th of August with Saturn.
Now Saturn is your own inner sense of authority. It's also the, the external authorities that you may be working or interacting with, but you are reinventing yourself. In fact, this day on the 24th, you're starting a new two-year cycle in this very area that you are touching upon on the 24th. So it has longevity. So I'm feeling I'm happy for those transits that just were there days prior because why? It's locking it in. It's the key in the door Aries. So super happy, super excited for you because the month also is ending off on such a great note that, you know, circle in the 27th here for celebration. This is Venus and Jupiter coming together. Venus, love and romance might be great for you. Jupiter wants to expand all of this with joy, happiness, uh, gracefulness, and also gifts. It's gifts of love, but both of these planets also rule money. So you might just see or hear news about money here on the 27th, which definitely is gonna put a big smile on your face. Um, so yes, what a way to end the month. But before I let you go, let's talk about the new moon because the new moon is August 2nd. And the new moon is when we place our intentions and this month, super important, just because of everything that we've just talked through, right? This new moon for you will be in the area of the fifth house of creativity, the businesses that you own, your children, love and romance, all of those things. So uh, we want to place our intentions here saying, I want more of this great energy that this month is giving me. I want the whole coming year until the new moon next year comes into this very same area. You won't have a chance before, but let's bring on more of this joy, happiness, laughter, creativity, uh, the feeling of love, romance, things just coming together for you. Why? Because those seeds will grow throughout the whole calendar year. So make sure August 2nd is marked on your calendar. It will be 10 degrees in Leo. Any other planets in your chart at 10 degrees will have the potential to grow along with it. Not just now, August 2nd, but throughout the whole calendar year. So listen, Aries, always great to see you. Thank you for all your comments. I don't always have time to respond, but I do listen, right? So I